This is a special edition of Your Path with Bishop Mark from Dallas Universal Life Church in Dallas, Texas. So I say good afternoon to you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. I know we don't have any mothers here today, but somewhere out there, somebody listening is a mother, and we'd like to wish them a happy Mother's Day, and hopefully they'll enjoy this sermon we have here today. Today's sermon is a little bit different from normal, because uh, we are not only here to worship the Lord, we are here also to uh, today to also honor our mothers, grandmothers, and all the other great mothers. It is a day for greetings and the expressions of love all around. But it is also a day for remembering because the telephone company remembering the tele- remembering because the telephone company tells us that Mother's Day is one of the busiest days of the year. And we all know that the shops just love Mother's Day because they make a lot from our sentimentality. Say that word five times fast. Sentimentality. But I'm not going to talk about them. I'm here to try and praise the true value of motherhood a task I will barely do justice in this short sermon because true motherhood, as you know, is a lifetime task. It is a difficult task. By the time a child reaches 18, it's estimated that a mother has done an extra 18,000 hours of work. Child-generated work. One mother once said, the joy of motherhood is what a woman experiences when all the children are finally in bed. But true motherhood is a calling. It is a privilege. And if valued correctly, it is a pleasure. But before I continue, I must make it clear that Mother's Day is not for everyone. It can be a a difficult time for some. Many women would love to have become a mother. But for some reason, they could not. And some people do not have what we call the best mother in the world. While others who did may have lost them through death or other circumstances. So... We must give a thought to them and be sensitive, and especially to those mothers who lost children and others who carry the guilt of wayward children. So to them, Mother's Day can be very difficult indeed, and so we sympathize. Men don't make good mothers. Now, now that sounds a little silly, me saying this, but men, or fathers, do not make good mothers. And sometimes men try, but what I'm getting at here is that there are many things men cannot do where women simply excel, and motherhood is one. And I will give you an example. A mother singing Brahms lullaby to a baby has the voice of an angel, a member in the celestial choir itself, whereas the father just simply can't. Yet the same voice of a mother can dwarf the sound of an amplifier when she calls the children for supper, or cheer them on at a football game. I remember someone once saying, You can fool some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time, but you can never fool your mother. A physics teacher gave the class a lesson on magnets. The next day, he recapped on the lesson and asked, My name begins with an M, has six letters, and I pick things up. What am I? The kids answered, My mother. At church a few years ago, I used to say to the volunteers at the end of a long Sunday, Get this place cleaned up. I am not your mother. Then one day, another visitor to the church put his two cents worth in and said, I bet their fathers are glad of that. I don't say that anymore. Did y'all get that? Who's just asleep on me today? Okay, wasn't that funny? All right. And mothers, too, are also well-known for teaching their kids, but in their own first-rate style. You may recognize some of their lessons. I remember my grandmother, my mother's mother, teaching me about contortionism by saying, have you seen the dirt on the back of your, the back of your neck? And she was, was real good with compassion when she say, if you fall off that bike and break your neck, don't come running to me. My own mother, even my own mother even, one day at breakfast table, at the breakfast table, gave me tips on safety and on harming, uh, on harming others. Now, if you, don't want, if you don't stop waving that thing around, you're going to take somebody's eye out. She, she would follow it with her wisdom on osmosis by saying, now will you shut your mouth and eat your breakfast? <laughs> my personal favorite was my mother 
uh, would say as she was giving a lesson to me on, on, the science, on the science of genetics, she would despondently say, you are just like your father. But what I'm getting at here is that mothers do hone in on the pastoral care of a child in a way that men just simply can't. And I think this quote by an unknown mother sums that up perfectly. Will my children remember their childhood? I want only for them to remember that their mother gave it her all. She worried too much. She failed at times, as she did not always get it right. But she tried her hardest to teach them about kindness, love, compassion, and honesty, even if she had to learn it from her own mistakes. She loved them enough to keep going, even when things seemed hopeless, even when life knocked her down. I want them to remember me as the woman who always got back up and loved them to the end. Out of the 69 kings of France, only three were really loved by their subjects. And these three were the only ones reared by their mothers and not by tutors or guardians. And there's a great saying from the Emperor Napoleon himself that says, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And I cannot overemphasize the wisdom in his words. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the man who led the transcendentalist movement of the mid-19th century, once said, men are what their mothers make them. Think about it. That is some accountability to place on a mother, particularly as there's an old Spanish proverb which says, an ounce of motherhood is worth a pound of clergy. Over the centuries, mothers have given their children plenty of good advice, some of which we have just heard, but here are some examples of what some mothers may have said to their famous sons. Christopher Columbus, for example, his mother might have said, I don't care what you've discovered. You, you could have written. I don't care what you discovered. You could have written. Or Michelangelo's mom might have said, why can't you write on the walls like every other kid? And my personal favorite, Thomas Edison, the inventor of the electric light, his mother may have said, Will you turn that light out and get to sleep? You see mothers again honing in on the welfare of their child. And there are some great portraits of motherhood in Scripture. Moses, for Moses' mother, for instance, when she put him in the basket and sailed him down the Nile. The more I think of that story, the more I see planning behind it. She knew where the basket would end up, but she still took a chance because she was thinking about her baby. And lady, later, on the step, on the step, later on, the stepmother of Moses, the woman who found him, cared so much for him that she broke the law in order to teach him the Jewish faith of his people. She also took a big chance. Proverbs 31 tells the story of the mother of King Lemuel, who gave advice to her son about godly living and how to pick a good wife and mother. And there have been many sermons made from that chapter for Mother's Day. There's also one of the most powerful stories in the title of a mother's love. In the Bible, excuse me, in the Bible of a mother's love. The story where a mother told King Solomon to give her child to another woman rather than having him killed or cut in half. And then there's the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. And in particular, the wedding in Cana, where she asked him to do his first ever recorded miracle. John chapter 2, verse 3 says, When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. You see, our great Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, respected and loved his mother. And that is our standard to follow. And we all know how tough a mother can be. There was a fourth grade teacher who had a student who was verbally abusive. And he was forced to give him a punishment exercise. Yeah. The big man that he was ran out into the corridor. I'm not doing it. No way. He was being a complete jerk, to be honest. But the teacher had a plan. A cunning plan. His student's mother worked in his school. And after a quiet word with her, the exercise was done and his attitude readjusted. Well, for a while. You would have guessed by now that there's no sermon about today's gospel this afternoon. But I hope you are enjoying this. A little poem about the hardships. A mother is considered old-fashioned to her teenagers and just mom 
to the primaries and simply mommy to the two uh, and three year olds. But there's hardly a thrill in their lives that could, complete, that could compete by saying to the world, that is my mother. A mother talking to an old university friend once said, I remember the time before I was married. I had three theories about raising children. Well now, I have three children and no theories. So here's a little poem I found somewhere which is, is pertinent. She fed me when I was hungry. She laundered all my clothes. She helped me study history and wiped my dirty nose. She often wiped my fevered brow. She taught me to ride a bike. She even taught me how to eat the foods I did not like. She wore old and faded clothes so I could wear something new. She set an example so that I would know what to say and what to do. She often worked from dawn to dark to make our house a home. While singing like a lark, her eyes with love light shone. Now wrinkles grace her once smooth brow. Her hair has turned to gray. And I begin to wonder how. I begin to wonder how I'll live without her here one day. Grandmothers, grandmothers, let's read you another topic. One day a little girl was sitting and watching her mother do the dishes. She suddenly noticed that her mother had several strands of white hair sticking out of her brunette head. The little girl asked, why are some of your hairs white, Mommy? The mother replied smugly, well, every time you do something wrong and make me cry or unhappy, one of my hairs turns white. The little girl thought for a moment and said, so how come... So how come my grandmother's hair is white? <laughs> grandmothers and great-grandmothers are extra special too, but grandmothers can be summed up in an essay written by a primary school pupil entitled, What is a Grandmother? You'll like this one. A grandmother is a lady who has no children of her own, but she likes other people's little girls and boys. A grandfather is a man-grandmother. He goes for walks with the boys and they talk about fishing and stuff like that. Grandmothers don't have to do anything except be there. They are old, so they shouldn't play too hard and they, they shouldn't run. When they take us for a walk, they slow down and show us pretty things like leaves and butterflies and things. And they never say things like, hurry up, we're going to be late. Usually grandmothers are fat, but not too fat to tie your shoes. They wear glasses and funny underwear, and they can take their teeth out. Grandmothers don't have to be smart, but they can answer questions like, why isn't God married, and how come dogs chase cats? Grandmothers don't talk baby talk like other adults do when they read to us. They, they don't skip parts of the story either. They don't even complain about being the same story over and over again. Everybody should try to have a grandmother, especially if you don't have a television, because they are the only grown-ups who have time for you. Again, I do not know who wrote that one, but it is fitting. Where we were brought up, almost all of us have fond memories of our mothers and grandmothers, and we're all here today to remember them and to the home where we were raised, because if we think of one, we think of the other. Remember the sounds and the sights and the smells of home? Remember the warm fire in the fireplace and the drafts from the doors and the windows, even the frost on the inside of the windows. Remember the smell of home baking and the taste from licking the spoon and the warm cookies just out of the oven. And you remember the dinners that only your mother can make? Even if it was only pork and beans, only a mother could add that special something to a simple meal to make it extra special, a blessing of love. I could go on for ages, as you know, but I would like to close by saying, may our Lord bless you and keep you all on this special day. I ask that you bow your heads in prayer with me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Savior. We thank you also for his mother, the Virgin Mary, who raised him perfectly to do your will. Father, although we want to applaud all the mothers who take the task seriously, 
We bring before you the mothers who do not. We remember, we remember to the women who cannot have children, and we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray too for all, all those who cannot enjoy Mother's Day because of strife. Father, be with each and every mother today and make their day a very special day to remember. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will is the only person here that, whose mother is still alive. So I know this is very hard for all of us, and I, I, I thank you all. Um, this is a hard day for a lot of people. But try and remember those memories. Try and remember the memories. There are good ones to remember, and that's what she would want. That's what your mother would want today. Is It was, it was her day, but even if it was her day, it was your day too. Remember that? <laughs> what? That's what I was even thinking about. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about like, Show would like to go home and get some cornbread for you. Oh, you know it. My mother could make a Frito pie that would knock you out. I, I've tried to make it here. I can't do it the same way. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. I always, always, always got to lick the spoon. And let, usually the bowl, too. <laughs> green, my mother made the best green bean casserole. That's the stuff that I make for y'all at Thanksgiving. It's her recipe. They live on through us. We pass that down to others. Whether we have kids or not, we pass it down. They're all here, by the way. Like a th like three little... They're both just all just kind of just smiling and bickering at each other. Just, just, oh, look, look, oh, see, oh, look, see, I told you he was going to be like that. It is time for everybody's favorite part of the service. That's right, the announcements. Compliments, concerns, suggestions, or complaints. Compliments, concerns, suggestions, or complaints. You got one of those? You need one of these folks. That's, a, that's an email address popping up there. Feedback at DallasVLC.com. Very simple, very self-explanatory there. You got one of those? Send us an email. Did you know we had two podcasts? We have two podcasts. Two. Two. Count them. Two. Our first podcast, most of you know about this, Your Path with Bishop Mark. It's been around for, it's in its sixth season now. Sixth season. Um, uh, that is our, our uh, gospel reading for every week and our sermon as well as the announcements and the round table uh, so it's your daily dose of Bishop Mark and your path hopefully now if you haven't checked out our path, your, your, your path with Bishop Mark please go check it out and, and, and you know I always find that if I uh, listen to the podcast or watch the podcast I catch something a little different than, than just being here in service or anything else it's just a different it's a different feeling hearing the podcast and we also do some special things on the recordings there and some cute little things on there. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. And at the end of the podcast, there's a place where you can talk to us. We ask you to ask you a question like, what did you think of the podcast? We haven't gotten much response. And I, I was, I'm trying to think of some better questions to ask because maybe that's just not the right question. But say something to us. If you liked it, tell us you liked it. If you didn't, tell us why. Um, I know you're watching. I can, see your, I can see the numbers out there, people watching, but you just haven't said anything. And I hope you will take the time to say something to us. So if you're listening to this podcast today, when it's done... When we're all finished here, say something about it. Tell us what you think. I appreciate it. Now, if you're wondering how you get to, you, to watch your path or listen to your path with Bishop Mark, simply go to your favorite search engine, your safety provider, uh, search provider out there, and type in your path with Bishop Mark. Um, or you can go to Alexa. If you have Alexa at home, say, Alexa, play your path, and she will play your path with Bishop Mark. Or you can go to one of your favorite providers. We have a lot, a lot of them listed on the back of your program here, uh, of your favorite uh, podcast providers out there, and they will gladly have us free of charge on their service. Okay, now, our second podcast is Life Lessons with Bishop Mark. And I like to call this the TikTok 
version of our podcast. I know it, it seems kind of stupid, but it, it really is. It, look, if you have a low, if you have attention span about this, this one's going to be for you because I, I have a lot of people that just don't they don't they don't make it through my sermons. They, either they fall asleep or they or they just turn it off or they walk away. You know, I, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, it happens. It happens. Some people, it's, it's not for some people, and that's okay. That's why we have life lessons. Life lessons are between two and five minutes long, and it's exactly what it says. It is it's life lessons explained. It's, it's things explained to you. I mean, we do things like sin and what is church and um, uh, doing to the least of these as you have done to me. Those, those topics there. You can see where it's going there. It's fairly new, and I think it's going pretty well. I like the way it's coming across to people, and I, I like the numbers I'm seeing. Again, at the end of the of the uh, podcast on that, you can leave a message. You, if you see something on there, you go. You can listen to it again and again. You can go listen to each lesson over and over, whatever you want to do. But you can leave a message at the end. Tell us what you think. So please do. Now, Life Lessons with Mitch Mark. It's, it's our new first season. This is our first full season here. Uh, you can do the same thing there. You can go to your favorite search engine, your favorite search provider, type in Life Lessons with Bishop Mark, and I guarantee you'll find it. Or you can go to one of those people I said before, those wonderful podcast providers, and they will have Life Lessons with Bishop Mark on their site. So please, go check out both of our podcasts. I know that was long, but I wanted to make sure everybody got it, got it in this time. Okay, let's move on. All right. You know, you can't make a difference. Our church is a full church of volunteers. All of us are volunteers. None of us take a salary, not even myself. Uh, we only re- we only way we can stay open is through our tithes of our community here and through donations from people out there in podcast land and YouTubeville, um, and we could really use the help. Uh, you know, I, I say it again and again. It's, it's tough times for everybody, and I know it is. Um, but if you believe in the message we're trying to get across here, the, the message of an all inclusive, all loving, all forgiving God, um, and believe in the fact that the true meaning of Christianity needs to be uh, told in this world again because I think we've lost it um, and we're ready to tell it. If you believe in us and believe in this message we're trying to do here, please consider making a donation to Dallas Universal Life, Dallas Universal Life Church. We, the only way we stay open, like I said, is through your donations and through our tithings and it's been tough and we really could use the help. So all you got to do is go to DallasRealC.com, click on Donate. Now, we are a 501c3 corporation, which means we are tax, your, your donation is tax deductible, so that's a good thing to have. Um, all of your money at this point goes into our general fund, which helps to fund our services and, and our, our ministry online as well. That's, that's where we're, we're working on now. We, of course, we go to uh, things like Pride uh, and, and celebrate and, and spread our message there. It's also, we also go and, and work at the, we go to the Alzheimer's Walk every year and spread our message and volunteer there as well. So... Those help those that little bit of money that we get from that also helps you know helps us to keep things going. But folks, you don't realize yeah, you know, there's paper for programs, right? There's computer maintenance, there's candles, there's linens, there's hosts and wine, there's electricity that is three times what it normally is on any other day of the week, right? So it's a lot of money. It does cost a lot of money to run a church. So if you can help us, please do. We really could use it. DallasFuelC.com, click on donate. All right, now it never happens, it never, never fails, always never fails. Somebody comes to me and says, Bishop, Bishop, I love the church. I love the church, and I, I want to be part of it, but I'm broke. I, I can't give you anything. And I hope you're going to say, well, you know what, I'm broke too. Well, could join the club. Who wants you to do what I do? Just volunteer, and volunteer your time. Your time is money. There's always something to do here at church. There's never enough hours in the day to get it all done, and we could use your help. Now, just go to DallasULC.com, click on Volunteer. There you'll find a list of the positions we have available for volunteers. If you don't like something there, if you don't see something you want, come in anyway. I guarantee you there's something you, we can, you can do here. I guarantee we can put you to work. And I guarantee we could use you. And it, 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 we could always use more help here at Dallas Universal Dallas Universal Life Church. But like I said, did, did we go to some, sometimes we, if we ever get to go to bed and sleep, because sometimes they're 24 hours and they just keep going, but the times we do get to sleep, things do get left undone. And it, it bothers me and it bothers the, the, the other volunteers, the congregants. We'd like to... Keep, keep things going, and I, more help, the better. So please, come in and volunteer with us, okay? All right. Pray at DallasULC.com. Pray at DallasULC.com. That's an email address, folks. You have a request for prayer, send us an email there at pray, at pray at DallasULC.com. It's very simple. You can remain anonymous, or you can give us your name. We pray every single day here at Dallas, Dallas Universal Life Church. So uh, when you give us your prayers, your prayers could be said during the week, or it might be said on the, during the uh, prayers of intercession here on Sundays with the entire congregation. But please, if you have a prayer request, do not hesitate. Pray at DallasVLC.com. We'd be glad to take care of that for you. Okay, folks. Guess what? It's right around the corner. <clears throat> right around the corner. Our seven-year anniversary. Seven years. 
I, I'm still just shocked that we're still here after seven years. If you only knew. The path that, I, that my life has led to get me here, and, and I mean, y'all too. I mean, all of us sitting here, I mean, believe it or not, all of us really weren't on the path to a, a good Christian life ahead. We, we, we all made mistakes. We did. And we all went down that road, right? Well, yeah, then you've never been to church, so this is your first time. You know, look, I'm very happy that we're all here. I'm very happy that my path diverted where it was going and came here. And, and I, I think this is where I'm supposed to be. I think this is where you're supposed to be. Seven years. Seven years we've been doing this. Okay, so on the 28th, is that correct? Yeah, May 28th. Sunday, May 28th. That is in two weeks. It's 14 days from now. You will finally get to see... The premiere of Seven, Rising from the Ashes, which is a movie I've been working my little butt off on, which now I have, it was finished, but now we've had some issues I have to go back and fix. <sighs> yeah, we had some, something happened in the rendering of it where it actually, it took out the color and made it green. So it kind of flashes the green, like your faces go green, the whole thing goes green. It's like, a, like an old computer screen, you know what I'm talking about? So i got to go and get those files and try and fix that. Make yourself comfortable, Gavin. Okay. All right. Huh? I'm sorry, you don't have to look. <laughs> you always got to be the center of attention, don't you? Look at right in the center of the room, always. Yep. Okay, here we go. So, seven in two weeks, 14 days from today. That's two weeks from today. Not next Sunday, but the Sunday after is our seven-year anniversary. There will be faith, fellowship, and food. Those three all go together on that day. We'll have a small reception, guys. Um, we will have the regular services. We'll have the watching of the movie. And we'll have the uh, reception. We probably won't do a round table because of the fact that we're going to be watching the movie. And the movie is, 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 is um, uh, a little lengthy. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, two weeks from today, please bring your friends, bring your family. Come, make sure you're here for the anniversary, the seventh anniversary of, uh, of uh, Dallas Universe Live Church. Now, look, we could also use some volunteers for that, that week. It's going to be a rough week for us. We've got a lot to do. So please, if you can, come in and help us that week. That would be great. Okay. Okay. Next announcement. The week after, the week after our seven-year anniversary, so it's in three weeks from today, 21 days from today, is the 40th Pride uh, that's going to be happening in Fair Park that we are members, that we are in, the Pride Parade. Okay. So that's 21 days from today. That's not, that's not this Sunday, not this coming Sunday, not the next Sunday, but the next Sunday after that. Three weeks, only three weeks away, guys. Ask your friends. Ask your family. Ask people if they want to come march with us. We'd appreciate them coming. We've got room. We, it's going to be a fun time for all. It's out at Fair Park. It's a great time. The experience is amazing. If you've never walked at a Pride Parade, you're missing out because it's a lot of fun. It really is. It's a lot of fun. And we'd love to have you come and join us. All of you out there in Podcastville and, and YouTube land, come on out. Come, come with us. Uh, Dallas Pride. June the 3rd and 4th, uh, the actual parade is on the 4th, and that's where we'll be going uh, with our big motor home, and we've got some new banners for it, and it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, hopefully a bunch of people. Um, so plan on that. Uh, that um, understand this. We do this, this just to let you all know in advance. 21 days, I'm just letting you know. We have a sleepover on that Friday, on that, on that, uh, that Saturday, that Saturday night. The 4th is a Sunday, okay? So on that Saturday night... If you're coming to the parade with us, you need to be here and sleep over that night, okay? Because that way we can make sure that we're all ready to go the next day. Because the next morning, we have to get up and do a, a morning service, which we don't do very well here. Because none of us like mornings that much, and I, I'm the first one to tell you that. But on that day, we have to do a morning service on, on Sunday because we have to be in the lineup at Fair Park at noon, okay? So, please, understand, on the 3rd, you need to be here. The doors will close at 10 o'clock on the 3rd. 10 o'clock p.m., please be here. I'll have some refreshments and things to keep us going for the night. And we'll have a good little time of fellowship, and then we'll go do our pride thing on the next day, okay? It's going to be a lot of fun, folks. I really think it's going to be going to be a blast. And Look, if you don't understand this, pride is a family-friendly time. It, there's nothing seedy going on out there. There's nothing adult-oriented. It's, it's very geared toward children, toward the family, toward, toward a loving um, environment. And, and I, if you want to bring kids, it's great. There, there were tons of kids out there last year. They had a blast. And I think, I think the more the merrier. I, I'd love to see the families out there. I think it's great. So here we go. Guess what? You made it. I'm out of breath. How's everybody doing? Everybody okay? Okay. Let's rise for a dismissal.